I want to talk about estimating the change in a bond price for a change in yield. And we're going to use the concepts of duration and convexity to do this estimation. And if you haven't already seen them, you may want to go back and view my videos on duration and convexity before you watch this one. Right here, this dark curve I've drawn here is the bond price yield relationship. And you can see it's downward sloping because as yield goes up, the price of the bond goes down. You also notice that it's not a straight line, it's a curve. It's convex. And it turns out that convexity is actually a rather nice property of this bond price yield relationship because it means that, for example, if the yield goes up by 1%, the percentage that the bond's price will fall will not be as much as the percentage the bond's price would rise if the yield fell by 1%. And again, in a previous tutorial, I, I have a graph for that and, a, and perhaps a little better explanation of that. Um, what we can see here is that I've drawn a line that's tangent to this price-yield relationship. And that's that line is used to estimate the price change based on duration. And you can see that just by looking at this, if the change in yield is very small, say the difference between Y star and Y2, a small change in yield, perhaps two basis points or five basis points, a rather small change in interest rates, then this line, the straight line, does a pretty good job of estimating the change in the bond's price. On the other hand, if you have a larger change in yield, perhaps 200 basis points, 2%, then you can see that the line would predict that this would be the price of the bond when the actual price of the bond is here. So you have this error here. So if you use only duration to estimate the change in the bond's price, if it's a big change in, in interest rates, you're going to be off by quite a bit. But if you use the concept of convexity, you can make an adjustment and get a better estimate. So let's take a look here. All right. If you take the uh, bond price relationship and you take a, a second degree Taylor order expansion, you can work through an equation like this. And it turns out that this side, this part of the equation right here, measures uh, duration, dollar duration. And this part here measures dollar convexity. And if we divide both sides by P, we get the approximate price change due to duration right here and the approximate price change due to convexity right here. The problem with looking at this is that you can't actually calculate anything by looking at this Taylor series expansion. But if you actually do the differentiation, you can find that we can calculate Macaulay duration as the difference uh, dp dy 1 over p. So this is going to be a percentage change. And it's going to be the sum of t equals 1 to n, the year, okay, or the period times the coupon divided by 1 plus uh, y raised to the teeth power. Okay, so the present value of the coupon times the period where you receive that coupon, plus the number of periods you have times the maturity value, and then take the present value of that. That gives you Macaulay duration. For the second term, we have this term here. This is the second derivative of the price equation. And now that you have these summation signs and you know these numbers here, we can actually calculate something. And you can it's quite easily done in Excel. So let's take a look at an example here. So here we have a bond that matures in five years and pays semi-annual coupon payments and it's going to pay it's a six percent coupon bond so you're going to get three 
three dollars each period and if we calculate these um, we calculate using the formula we had before so we have one over one plus the interest rate raised to the t plus two power here over here we have t times t plus one times this cash flow and then here we have this divided by this and if we work this out we get if we sum this up we get seven thousand three hundred forty nine point four five in this column in this column here we get uh, twelve thousand three hundred and twenty and if we flip the slide the second derivative is that number we summed up in the far right hand column the convexity measure in half years is going to be the second derivative divided by the price of the bond okay I didn't put the price of the bond there but you can calculate the price of the bond simply by you know taking the present value of the cash flows discounted by the interest rate of four and a half percent and you get eighty three point three nine three three the convexity measure in years is going to be this convexity measure in half years divided by uh, n raised to the n squared so it's going to be four okay actually not n but the number of periods here squared so it's going to be four so the convexity measure in years is twenty point eight four eight three and dot the dollar convexity measure is going to be the price of the bond times the convexity measure so 1841.11 alright the bonds duration can also be calculated and here we just take the present value of all these cash flows right here multiply them by t sum them up and divide by the price of the bond that gives us Macaulay duration in half years 8.690 Macaulay duration years we're going to divide that by 2 4.345 and modified duration is Macaulay duration divided by 1 plus the yield so we get 4.158 so if we if we have that small change in interest rates okay for example a 10 basis point change then duration does a pretty good job but what if we have a larger change in interest rates for example 200 basis points if the yields rise from 9% to 11% the price of the bonds going to fall from 8116 to uh, so I'm sorry it's going to fall to 8116 and it's going to be a drop in price of 7.91 percent and you can work that out for yourself by just punching it into your financial calculator or using Excel to solve for the price of this bond now if you only use modified duration to figure out the percentage change in the price of the bond the formula says the change in the price is going to be minus modified duration times the change in the yield here the change in the yield is 200 basis points or 2 percent so it's going to be minus 4.159 times point, uh, 0 0.02 so we get minus 0 0.0832 or 8 point, uh, a negative 8.32 percent change in the price of the bond Okay. but we saw that it changed by 7.9 percent so let's see what happens if we use convexity the percentage change due to convexity is going to be one half times the convexity measure which we calculated before at 20.8483 times the change in the interest rate squared and that's going to be equal to 0 0.0042 or 0.42 percent let's put those two together the estimated price change due to duration and convexity is going to be this minus 8.32 percent due to duration 
plus the adjustment for convexity. So we get minus 7.90%, which is very, very close to the actual percentage price change of 7.91%. So if, if you're going to try and approximate the change in the price of a bond, if you're doing it for large changes in interest rates, you should use convexity to adjust that percentage change and you'll get a much better estimate. And had this been a longer term bond, the adjustment would have been even, even more critical to use the uh, duration, uh, the convexity adjustment.